today. Red Arrow, fucking idiot! Guy? Ah. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, happy Sunday. Welcome to this review of High School Musical, the musical, the series, season three, episode three. Now, I know what you're thinking. There's no poster behind me. It wouldn't fit on this wall. So I've got one here in front of me, two over there, and then one off in the background, which you'll see in reaction videos. Now, this episode was called The Woman in the Woods. And this was a very weird episode, so I more than likely am going to fly through this episode because nothing really stood out with this episode, if I'm being 100% honest. The first two episodes were great. This one kind of dragged a bit. Like, it wasn't memorable. We open with the recap from EJ. He gives us a little a little rundown, a little recap. And then we see Gina waking up Courtney by singing, Do you want to build a snowman? And she reveals that her and Courtney are Anna and Elsa. And then we get to see the cast list. I'm just going to run through this cast list. Ricky got the part of Kristoff. Great. Carlos, <laughs> he got the role of Olaf, the snowman. And he kind of complains about that, that he was Lumiere in Beauty and the Beast. Ashlyn got shafted as hell. She got the ensemble, so she's not even a main character. And fucking EJ got the role of, fuck, he didn't get Prince Hans. He got the role of Sven, the reindeer. He got the fucking reindeer. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. Who got the role of Prince Hans? They give the role of Prince Hans to Jet, the guy who barely talks, keeps to himself, they give him the role of Prince Hans. Am I pissed at that? Not really. I, I think it can work. I like it personally. And then we learn from uh, Maddox that tonight is like a campfire tradition thing. And also Carlos. The, the, the room has security cameras. So he got caught trying to change the cast list. So I think my suspicion was right that Carlos tried to put himself as Kristoff or something, but they obviously saw security cameras and give him the role of Olaf. So, you got busted, Carlos. That's why you're the role of Olaf. Maddox then gets all the girls, like, gives them a rundown on what the events are going to happen tonight. And then EJ barges into the room and he has two minutes to talk to Gina. Which I think is nice, you know, give them the romantic moment in this series. And then we cut to them heading out to the woods. Which I think is good, you know, that's also a Frozen reference in... No, it's not Into the Woods, it's Into the Unknown. But in Frozen 2, they were in the woods anyway, because it was the thing, but whatever. <laughs> and we then cut to the night time, where... EJ is told that he has a lot of work to do because Corbin is arriving. So Corbin's going to be coming back in the next episode next week. Um, but they all gather around the campfire and sing a campfire song because, of course, they do. EJ is the one to play that song. And I think he delivers it uh, quite well. He does his own little uh, number here for Camp Shadow Lake, which is good. I like it. I do. EJ, you have a lot of stuff on your hands currently, but what you did here gets a thumbs up from me. Surprisingly, and it's very rare I give you a thumbs up, EJ, but you did good here. You did good here. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I just want a minute of your time in, in the middle of this video. I know it's weird, but whoa, Disney, a channel very close to my heart, as you know, they're trying to get monetized and they need roughly about 1000 odd video watch time. It would mean so much to me if you can go over support Madison and Mackenzie, get them monetized. Nothing is more beneficial to a YouTuber than becoming monetized and supporting not only me, but supporting them as well. This is just a minute little video that I wanted to do. Thank you for listening. Back to the original video. Then Manic tells this scary story, or it's meant to be scary, but Jeff is just constantly making jokes throughout the whole thing, and this kind of pisses off Maddox, and she ends up storming off. Carlos and Ricky play this joke on Courtney, and Carlos has like this mask on, they want to do activities, but EJ says that he has a lot of stuff to do. He's got to prepare for Corbin coming in the morning. So Ashlyn goes off into the barn and she kind of sings this song because she feels, you know, she was Belle in the, first, in the second season and now she's just been bumped to the ensemble, which is kind of like an insult to her. Ricky and... Gina start getting a little bit too close with each other um, and they end up finding Ashlyn in in the barn and they have a nice moment the three of them together they they kind of came together in this scene talking about Ashlyn and her self-doubts and then we learn a huge a huge bombshell that Maddox is actually related to Jet, their brother and sister, because Maddox talks about how their mom and dad wanted her to watch him at this, at the summer camp. So that was something I was not expecting them to be related to each other. Bombshell, right? <laughs> and then the episode just closes weirdly with EJ, Courtney, and Carlos in their tent, where Carlos says that Ricky and Gina are 100% missing, and EJ just brushes it off. Like, oh, don't worry, they'll be fine. They'll find their way back. And then we see Ricky and Gina kind of being a bit too friendly with each other, and they're laughing with each other. She's giggling a bit. And she says goodnight to him. They say goodnight to each other. And then the episode just ends. So you see why this one kind of confused me a little bit. There wasn't... Like, we found out the cast list. That was, like, the big takeaway for me. Because I obviously wanted to know who was who. And now I know who Prince Hans is. I'm not going to be against it. But we know that Corbin's coming back next week. So that should be interesting ladies and gentlemen i'm going to end the video here nini wasn't even in this episode at all no mention of her no no follow-up to whatever happened last week i don't know if miss like miss jen was in trailer footage so she should show up down the line i mean we're only what not even halfway through next week will be halfway because there's eight episodes and um, next week is episode four, so we should be halfway through next week. So maybe there's still time for some development on whatever happens with Nini. I, I don't know. <sighs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it. Next video on this channel, probably the Gaston pop vinyl because I don't, I don't have anything else. Currently to review, he lied inconspicuously, that's a big word, 
branch of C2, getting out all the big words inconspicuously. Woo! I'm going to end it there, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching this episode, probably the lowest on my list. I think episode two was great. Episode one, actually, no, episode, I'm just going to list them, I mean, ranking them one, two, and then three. That, that's the order so far. Just because episode three, it, it didn't stand out for me, unfortunately. But hey ho, it could could change. Anything could change at this point, you know. Anything could.